Good day, mate. Forty here, listening to a podcast with Athenian stranger talking to Alex Kashuta. At least the 1960s. What I mean by that is media. I mean, I've been indoctrinated in less way thinking since I was a child just by watching. This is the, the credulous, just thoughtless reactionary position of so many people on the distant right that uh, all the media just brainwashes people. If you believe in evolution, right, and the entire basis of thought for the distant right is evolutionary and atheist, then you'll realize we weren't born yesterday. We could not evolve to be gullible or we wouldn't be here. So this idea that, you know, propaganda is just so effective, and there's no evidence for this. Nazi propaganda, communist propaganda didn't change mind. Neither does woke propaganda. In essentially American productions. I speak this way because I've watched a lot of television. <laughs> this is the way people on yeah. TV speak. Yeah, I, I, I would just simply... Yeah, you pick out some speaking mannerisms, all right? And you get, you know, familiarity with some things that you'd rather not be familiar with, but it doesn't fundamentally change you from left to right, or right to left, or change you from religious to secular. You know, when I started watching TV, that was hugely influential on me in my teenage years. It was hugely influential on me because I wanted it to be. I wanted this exciting new world outside of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. All right? TV didn't turn me from religious to secular. It took me along a road I wanted to travel. I add real quickly to that, that um, that's what's so funny about seeing these American journalists get orgasmic about uh, the, what's happening in Iran and also what's happening with that, with soccer people or whatever protesting and stuff, the people protesting in China. Uh, they act as if somehow America is not more propagated, ha- doesn't have more propaganda than any other country in the world except maybe. The, the presence of propaganda isn't what makes for oppression or doesn't destroy your capability of being human. All right. I mean, this guy is about to compare America to North Korea, which people on the distant right do all the time, and it's absolutely brain dead. North Korea. We're just comfortable in our propaganda. That's the reason we don't see it. Uh, we think uh, that we have choice. Oh, really? So he sees the things that you don't see. You're too stupid to see this, but he sees it because he's so wise. What, you don't think ordinary people on the right can uh, detect you know, left-wing propaganda? People weren't born yesterday. They're not born gullible. We did not evolve to be gullible. We're not stupid. People on the right can detect left-wing propaganda. You don't need a PhD in classical studies to be able to detect left-wing propaganda. So let's go look at some ancient Aboriginal art. I mean, this is greater than what Michelangelo produced. Voices and stuff like that, but then, you know, we don't realize that it takes someone like a Donald Trump to come along and remind everyone that the news is simply fake. And now... Oh, so prior to Donald Trump, people didn't realize the news was fake. Right, the news is what different bureaucracies report, right? That's what the news is, because news is a business and you can package, you know, the reports of bureaucracies, whether they're juries or Wall Street or Justice Department or the House of Representatives, all right? Look at these amazing Aboriginal engravings. Wow, a kangaroo a sunfish, and several smaller fishes. Just amazing Aboriginal art here. Yeah, uh, people realized the news was fake and gay prior to Donald Trump. Right? News is a business. It hypes. Like Journalists think it's okay to hype, meaning you're essentially lying about the importance of what you're reporting. So much of the reporting on Trump's ties to Russia was factually accurate, but it was hyped so that if you wanted to believe that Trump was fatally compromised by a relationship with Russia, you could believe that. But the reporting was, was more careful than that. It was more factual than that. But it was hyped. Choices and stuff like that. But then, you know, we don't realize that it takes someone like a Donald Trump to come along and remind everyone that the new... So as soon as I'd read these stories about Donald Trump's ties to Russia, you know, I would just... My eyes would glaze over. I'd just find it so boring. It was just so inconsequential. But, you know, it was factually accurate, but completely inconsequential. So just because something dominates the news, right, doesn't mean that it's important, right? There's, there's no necessary connection between hype and importance.
right? What a, a lot of things that are compelling are unimportant. A lot of things that are you know, famous or attention grabbing you know, dominate the, the mainstream media, right? Not important, such as the, the whole Trump Russia story. It's actually accurate, but inconsequential. You don't think the US is constantly interfering in elections overseas? There's no evidence that the Russian disinformation campaigns on Facebook and Twitter you know, had any significance, right? The, the newsworthy Israeli significant and the significant Israeli newsworthy. And I don't think we needed uh, Donald Trump to tell us this. See it. Uh, we think uh, that we have choices and stuff like that, but then you know, we don't realize that it takes someone like a Donald Trump to come along and remind him. Oh, we think we have choices, but until Donald Trump comes along, we really didn't understand that we had choices. I mean, this is such dreck, and it's so common to use this rhetoric in the distant right that uh, we were just mindless automatons until Donald Trump came along and showed us the truth that we were just seeing shadows on the cave dancing on our TVs. It took Donald Trump to take us out of the cave and into the sunlight of truth. Everyone that the news is simply fake. And now, now that curtain is being sort of pulled back. But anyway, I just wanted to add. The news is a business, like other business. It's fake like the ad for the Australian Army saying, Joining the Australian Army, you know, gave me a whole new life. Shows this beautiful woman who's become a driver in the Australian Army. And it's her ticket to a whole brand new life. Okay? I'm going to wager that that's uh, pretty fake. I don't think that the Australian Army had that transformative effect. All right, look at commercials, all right? Uh, not necessarily accurate and truthful, but filled with hype. And so that's what you know, a lot of businesses rely on, right? They rely on hype. They rely on exaggeration. They rely on saying things that are you know, supposedly really important, but in essence, not so important. So you can't outsource your reality to someone else, right? Why would you just automatically trust what uh, the news or some expert or academic says. Okay, Reef Beach, Manly. Here we go. Someone like a Donald Trump to come along and remind everyone that the news is simply fake. And now, now that curtain is being sort of pulled back. But anyway, I just wanted to add that because that can't be emphasized enough is that uh, America as a people is far more propagandized than any other country in the world. Just think about the. Uh, and he says that as though it means something. All right? You could give me pro-gay propaganda all day long and I'm not going to go out and suck a dick, right? You give me pro-cocaine propaganda all day long and I'm not going to go out and snort cocaine, right? He talks as though we're just incredibly vulnerable to propaganda. He talks as though we're all just unthinking automatons until Donald Trump came along and restored our humanity. And he's a professor of the classics. Give me a break. The number of uh, big pharma commercials that you see uh, constantly, you know, going directly to uh, ordinary Americans. And he's talking as though we're helpless in front of big pharma commercials. So I see a big pharma commercial for Viagra and I can't help but go to my physician to get some because I'm just a mindless automaton. Like I evolved to be stupid and gullible, right? Hundreds of thousands of years of evolution, right, produced me just so gullible and stupid. That I'm vulnerable to pharmaceutical to advertising. To together so that the people will go to their doctor to ask for these medications. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just incredible. But anyway, I'm sorry, I sort of interrupted you there, but please. What's so incredible about allowing free speech to pharmaceutical companies? Right? You, you really think that people can't handle seeing some commercials for some pharmaceutical product, and even though it doesn't meet any of their needs, they're just going to feel like they've been turned into zombies, right? Right? They've been bitten by a zombie from the commercial, right? This is the zombie bite theory of information. You give people, right, the left uses this, right? If uh, people are exposed to the Right Stuff podcast or you know, some piece of you know, alt-right information or entertainment, then they'll get bit by a zombie and they'll turn into radicals and it'll destroy their lives. If people read some forbidden book, such as Bell Code by Charles Murray or 
and then Mein Kampf by Adolf Hitler, then they'll just mindlessly turn into some antisocial radical. And uh, the zombie bite theory of information is bogus. That isn't how people deal with information. People take information. If it's conducive to the direction they want to go, they will use it. If it's not conducive to the direction they want to go in life, guess what? They won't use it, right? We weren't born yesterday. We're not gullible. Didn't evolve to be gullible. We're skipping over the doctor altogether so that the people will go to their doctor to ask for these medications. Yeah. We have evolved extremely good inner mechanisms to detect when other people are trying to manipulate us. Like we're terrible at evaluating our own thinking. That's why we need to think socially. But we're very good at detecting when other people are trying to manipulate us. Right? If we weren't, we wouldn't still be here. Right? We didn't evolve to be gullible. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just incredible. But anyway, I'm sorry, I sort of interrupted you there. But please no, no, it's, you know, I, I, I live in, in an offshoot of the empire and it's probably partly as bad as that. It's just we, we haven't gotten the, the, the gear up. We haven't gotten things up to that speed. I don't think you can have sub supplements advertised on TV, but I don't think you can have actual, uh, I think this is EU regulation, not necessarily a bad one. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 an, it's an insane. So yeah, the European Union is going to fall apart when they allow direct-to-consumer pharmaceutical advertising. Right? When they allow the same freedom of speech to companies as they allow to individuals, then society will just fall apart because people won't be able to resist the allure of pharmaceutical advertising. I don't know, I've probably seen well over a thousand pharmaceutical ads in my life and I've never once gone to my doctor and asked for any of these products. But maybe I'm special. Yeah, maybe I'm as special as uh, you know, Athenian stranger. In degree of things speaking to you, consuming all of your available attention, essentially robbing you of a big part of your humanity, which is... Yeah, pharmaceutical ads. Did you realize they're robbing you of a big part of your humanity? <laughs> I don't feel robbed my humanity by advertising, by propaganda, right? All the left-wing propaganda out there, I don't think it has reduced my humanity 1%. So this is such a common victimhood talking point on the distant right that is absolutely bogus and stupid, makes no sense, doesn't stand up to any critical examination, but because members of this victimhood group just repeat it endlessly back and forth to each other in different accents and different variations. It's like, oh, advertising it just robs us of our humanity. Uh, being exposed to left-wing perspectives robs us of our humanity. Having a left-wing teacher robs us of our humanity. Our institutions being dominated by the left it just robs us of our humanity. I recognize that almost all our institutions are dominated by the left. I don't feel like it's robbed me of my humanity. I mean, how gullible and stupid you realize these people think you are. They think, oh, they're able to see through the BS, but you, you're too stupid to see. Like you're blind. You've been robbed of your humanity by pharmaceutical advertising and uh, left-wing propaganda. Just not how people work. Of things speaking to you, consuming all of your available attention, essentially robbing you of a big part of your humanity. Okay, so pharmaceutical ads and left-wing advertising, I just don't feel like it's robbing me of all of my attention, right? I feel a lot of agency, like I feel like I can determine where my attention goes, right? I don't have any problem with that, right? My attention goes where I want it to go. My attention doesn't go to, you know, pharmaceutical advertising or left-wing propaganda unless I choose to engage with it, right? My phone doesn't ring unless I set my phone to ring. Usually 95% of the time I have my phone on do not disturb. Right? I, I don't allow the outside world to run my life. I like to think I have a sense of agency over my own life and uh, I'm not going to put up with it. Right? I love being here in Australia. I love my free time. I love directing my attention where I want. Which is just, you know, being bored and focusing and, and kind of relaxing limbically in your surrounding. Like it's, that that you know, is such an important and amazing point. Is Oh, wow, that's such an important and amazing point. Jesus, how stupid are these people? That uh, people can't relax, 
you know, without just taking in left-wing propaganda and pharmaceutical advertising. People are just helpless in the face of this. And when they relax, then they take this in and they become programmed by it. And uh, it robs them of their humanity. I, I don't know, I feel like I can decide what I want to take in. And even if I take it in, it doesn't mean I need to act on it. We've evolved very good mechanisms for detecting when institutions, advertisers, businesses, friends, family, community, strangers are trying to manipulate and influence us. Right? We're not helpless. And, and that gets back around to everything that sort of defines my existence, uh, certainly on Twitter. Is Yeah, this defines his existence, these bogus, stupid, idiotic, you know, victimhood mentality points that have no validity. How are we supposed to slow down uh, in this world that is so fast paced? How are we supposed to slow down? Oh, go for a walk. Uh, maybe leave your phone behind. Turn off your notifications that people can't interrupt you. Uh, listen to classical music, read a book, uh, go to church, go to synagogue. Like, are we, are we prevented from doing any of these things? How are we prevented from slowing down? I just don't see it. And it's only teaching us to be more fast paced, right? Because I mean, that's how the social media is. That's how they make us addicted to it, right? Uh, is you expect immediate returns on things. I, I can still remember. Oh, they just make us addicted. And, and we have no choice, right? We have no say, we have no power, right? We're just forced to mindlessly doom scroll on Facebook and Twitter. You can uninstall the apps. You can drop your account. You can reduce the amount of time you spend with social media. Yeah, businesses, not just businesses, individuals, communities, groups are always trying to act in their self-interest, all right? They're trying to get you to do things. You've evolved really good mechanisms to see through their manipulations and act in your best interests. Remember when all you had to worry about uh, you know, was receiving, you know, question mark, question mark, question mark in a text if you didn't respond quick enough. Uh, now people will absolutely go insane if they can't find a YouTube instructional video on how to do, you know, whatever their math assignment is. Okay, if you go insane because you can't find a YouTube instructional video, that has nothing to do with YouTube. That has to do with you, right? You're operating with way too much anxiety. In all likelihood, because you lack connection in your life. If you had a few more mates, right, you had a sense of community, I had a church or a synagogue, right? If you had good relations with family, extended family, right? You wouldn't be nearly so anxious. Or just get to a good therapist or the appropriate 12-step program. This treating us as though we're infants and stupid, but 